everyone, Vi Farley here, Monday, November 12th. It is week 12 of the college football season, week 11 of the NFL season. It is November 12th, Veterans Day, so uh, or at least celebration of Veterans Day, um, and which least I could do is say thank you to all the veterans. Probably the best thing I could do uh, more than any winning plays would be to just say thank you so much uh, for your service to our country. Uh, it is much appreciated here uh, from Five Farley. So uh, definitely appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, now, want to get this video out to review last weekend, um, go through, which <laughs> pains me to do. Um, and then also give a weekday pick out uh, for this week. I picked out the one best play I believe we have this week uh, to isolate. And uh, I'll cap that for you here in this video as well. But I do want to go back through this weekend because there's a lot of lessons to be learned as well as uh, I I'm going to pick, show you a pick that I was right on, pick I was wrong on, and a pick I was right even though it didn't come out on the winning side on both Saturday and Sunday. So let's get right into that. Well, before I do, let me say thank you to subscribers. I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, uh, please do so. Hit the notification bell. Um, subscribe, get my picks. I got NFL picks coming out on Friday. Got uh, college football picks coming again, coming out on Friday as well. Uh, so check out those videos. Uh, if you haven't already done so from last weekend, um, uh, just stay tuned. By hitting that notification bell, you get my videos as soon as they come out. By the way, thank you to those uh, individuals who chimed in and uh, gave some props out. I do appreciate it. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't a great weekend as far as hitting wins uh, right after getting some nice compliments. So uh, just the way it goes, though. Having done this for so long, it's it's the way it goes sometimes. Sometimes you have winners. Sometimes you have losers. Uh, get on streaks both hot and cold. So I'm looking to break this weekend down and make sure it's going to be a winning week this week. Uh, but, you know, to say it's never happened before uh, would not be honest. So... Uh, has definitely happened. Uh, looking forward to uh, coming right back, though, this week. So there you go. Um, let's go over Saturday real quick. So Saturday, there's not a lot that I was wrong on. Now, I, uh, someone used to say, well, the wrong side is the losing side. The winning side is the right side. That's not always true. I, really, when you've capped for so long, you really look at it in like groups of 10. If they were to do that game 10 times, how many times would they come out on one side versus the other? And, you know, first game in the morning was Michigan Rutgers. I picked under the 47. I think they play that game 10 times. I think 7 out of the 10, it goes under. Um, I was given all the information again, as I had going into Saturday, I probably would pick the under again. Um, even having watched what happened and having to bet it again, I'd probably bet the under again. Um, I think Michigan was a little surprised that Rutgers scored on them in the first quarter. And they didn't take the foot off their gas off the gas until the fourth quarter when they were uh, you know they scored their 42nd point making it total at 49 two over the 47. I thought they were stopping at 35. I think they scored one more for uh, good measure because it was close. Not too disappointed by that Michigan Rutgers uh, underplay that didn't come through. Another one I'm not disappointed by was Cincinnati uh, minus 13 and a half. Um, they had that covered. They should have covered. They were on the goal line as the the time expired, taking a knee, um, which it was the right thing to do, but they were this close to covering that game, and I really think they should have. I'm surprised they gave up 23 to uh, South Florida, to be honest. Uh, North Carolina covered against Duke, not really a threat there. The other one, this one blows me away. SMU um, scores 62 points against UConn and doesn't cover the 19. They were they were up by 21 for a lot of the game. Um, I, I'm blown away they gave up 50 points to UConn. Just blown away. That's incredible. Um, I, again, feel like I was on the right side of that play as it didn't come through. A sharp play that I was really surprised by. I put this one out there. Charlotte, plus 14. They give up a touchdown in the fourth quarter to Marshall. Drop 30-13 to 13 to Marshall, not covering the 14. Uh, another play that, again, given the playing that game 10 times, I think they're going to cover at least seven of the ten times. That was one of the three where they just didn't come through, uh, losing uh, by 17. The one where I was wrong. All right, this is the one where I think, played again, information I have now, I would not have taken this game again, which was the under San Jose State, Utah State. I was wrong there. They crossed over the exact score that I was picking, which was 45-17 in the third quarter. They move on to a 24-62 uh, victory by Utah State going way over the total. So um, I was wrong on that one. Definitely wrong on that one. Uh, ends up being a one in five day. 
Moving on to Sunday, doesn't get much better. Uh, cover with the Seahawks. Um, I was wrong on the Eagles, wrong on the Bengals, wrong on the Lions. Lions almost battled back. Here's the one I was not wrong on, though, was the Bucks. The Bucks losing 16-3 to was not indicative of how they played. The Bucks played fantastic, 200 more yards than uh, the Redskins. There was interception on the goal line. There was a couple missed field goals. There was a fumble. There was, um, I mean, everything that could possibly go wrong for the Bucks went wrong. This was, uh, it was awful to watch. If you watched that game and you were on the same side as me with the Bucks, uh, not to mention my second half play, watching how the first half went, thinking the Bucks were going to outscore them by 21 in the second half because there's only a matter of time before they score, right? I, I was just super frustrated by that game. Um, I usually don't let games get to me like that, but that one was just really, really frustrating. So on that note, uh, I'm going to wrap up last week and move right on to this week. Um, and I've broken down the games this week. I got one that I really like. So let's get into that because I'm going to just move on from last week. I'd like to, to, to do so. Um, so let's move on to what, a game that I really like this week. All right, so we got Buffalo. This is on Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, 4 o'clock um, kickoff Pacific time. Buffalo's going to Ohio. So I really like this play um, on the side of Ohio. Buffalo, who is 9-1, 6-0 in conference, Hasn't really played too hard of a schedule. I'll be honest, I liked their win against Miami, Ohio. I'll, I'll, give, them, I'll give them credit for winning 51-42 at home where they won the turnover battle. Um, so, you know, 51-42, that's a good win. The rest of their wins, we're looking at Kent State, who is 1-5 in conference. Um, you know, Akron's 2-4. Central Michigan's 0-7. Um not a lot to get too excited about on who they've beat, except for earlier in the year. They won at Temple, which is great, with, out of conference. Um, it, it's what I'm trying to – you can't always just take 9-0 and or 9-1, and 6-0 and in conference um, at face value and just say, well, they're playing a 6-4 and four team um, who is 4-2 and two in conference and just say that they're better. Because let's look at Ohio real quick. So Ohio's undefeated at home. They haven't lost a game at home. In conference, the closest game was 49-14. to It was Bowling Green. Um, they lost the loss to NIU, who was also undefeated, 6-0. and uh, They're 7-3 and overall. They had 3-0 to zero turnovers. Uh, they gave up three turnovers to Northern Illinois' zero. And Northern Illinois had to come back scoring 15 points in the fourth quarter on the road for Ohio just to lose by three. They really should have won that game, which would put them um, within striking distance of Buffalo here today. Now, they also lost this at Miami, Ohio by two points. Um, they also lost a turnover battle in that one. Now they're at home. I don't expect them to lose a turnover, turnover battle at home. One last thing I like about this one as I break it down is that the line opened up at minus one and is now up to minus two and a half in favor of Ohio. I think as we look at this one, before I saw a line, I was thinking, hmm, probably Buffalo minus three. Uh, but they put the line in favor of Ohio uh, and it's moved towards Ohio. I think Vegas knows Ohio's winning this game. Uh, they don't have to put it over on that side, but they did because I think they believe Ohio is going to be winning this game. So um, I'm going to be on the Ohio side. I'll lay the two and a half with Ohio. Um, I don't think Buffalo, I think they're, I wouldn't say luck, but their turnover battle wins on the road here will run out. And Ohio is going to play a cleaner game and end up winning this one coming off a loss at Miami, Ohio. Uh, I, I think they, uh, they beat Buffalo by double digits. So I'm going to take Ohio here, minus two and a half. Uh, good luck, everyone, this week. Uh, check out my plays on Friday. Again, don't forget to subscribe and uh, to hit the notification bell and check out my weeks, my plays at the end of the week. We'll have a much better weekend this weekend. It's got to be. Uh, uh, good luck. We'll see you again soon.